The one thing that sucks about Land Rovers. But there, we could wash our hands. Then we could come over here and go to the bathroom. Welcome back to Lost Cause Ranch. Today I attempt to play interior designer inside the shop. We lay the mezzanine out. I'm gonna need your help on that. We also get to some much needed maintenance on the budget LR4, but first we play concrete guy. Kinda sick of the muddy entrance right outside the walk-in door anytime it rains, so we're gonna fix that. A surefire way to drum up some rain is to pour some concrete. Zero percent chance when I started this process this morning, and now we're gonna have thunderstorms. Wonderful. much nicer to step on to. I'll have to get the bob kitty in here and pull some of this dirt away. Eventually the driveway will be re-sloped and concreted in front of the shop, but that's for another day. Got another hover car in here. So I just took a little masking tape and laid out our boundary here. So that mark there is eight feet from the pole. And what I wanna do before we go investing in the wood and the time is starting to put this up, I'd like to lay it out in some masking tape to see if this is going to function the way it does in my head. This roll of masking tape is $2. The wood and time is much more expensive. All the fab stuff is gonna be underneath the mezzanine. We're gonna have about an eight foot ceiling under there, a little under seven and a half on top. Eight foot ceiling's obviously not ideal, but in the old shop, all our fab stuff was in that same area and if we have something that needs to be taller we obviously have the rest of the shop we can move it out to but the fab benches and all that is a good use of space that can be with a shorter ceiling it's nicer to have full ceiling height with the cars at least in my head we need something heavy because the tape will not stick this is going great wonderful Look who came to join us. Now that we have the rough layout of the mezzanine done, you'll get a better picture of what's going on in my head. The oddball situation we have going on here is the 45 degree angle coming off that first post. My thoughts behind that was to gain that extra square footage in the mezzanine while still being able to pull stuff into the back shop easily the first corner post would be right at the tip of my finger so you can see we have plenty of room to drive ourselves on back to where the p38 and the nada is otherwise without that i think we would start here and go straight back but i think that is some useful space that will not hurt anything so essentially what we would be working with is an 8 by 24 rectangle which would give us what is that 192 square feet half of an 8 by 8 which is 64 give us 32 square feet so we would be looking at 234 square feet up top although not huge in itself 
but when we're talking about a 1440 square foot building 232 square feet is adding 15 16 percent and essentially it is dead space in some areas because the 16 foot ceiling height so with this we'll be turning a 1440 square foot building into a just shy of 1700 square foot building and we'll be able to keep all my office and bathroom duties off the main level it would be nice to move my office out of the house and have everything related to the lost cause ranch and whatnot in one building but here is where you guys are going to come in as well i'm laying this thing out in masking tape and putting this video up ahead of doing anything permanent because I'd like to hear your ideas on layout. This is obviously a compromise. I'm not delusional thinking this is the ideal layout, but we are working with what we have. Just want to make it the best as possible. I'll lay my room ideas out in masking tape, but staircase is going to be on the back wall. Air compressor will be under that. So that is a good use of that space. We could wall the air compressor in and do an intake out the back keep the noise down when we're running that but after staircase i'm thinking bathroom then office the only thing i'm having issue with is the bathroom we put the bathroom up against the wall and do a short hallway into the office with a railing you could look out over stuff or do we do a bigger bathroom with a double door and you have to walk through the bathroom to get to the office that doesn't seem ideal well, let's lay the stairs out first because that's where they're going to be so that'll be our fixed point the rest of it open for interpretation there is some Oil stains from a Land Rover, shocking I know. Landing for the staircase there, stairs, and yes I know it will extend past here. What I'm thinking for that is this area will be a fixed normal staircase and then the last few stairs which will go to somewhere around here. We'll design those flip up and flip down stairs for the ones that extend past the mezzanine in case we need that extra space for any reason we aren't going to chew it up permanently we'll have cnc plasma table here welding benches welders more benches probably the laser somewhere in this area we'll probably do the break across here lathe and mill somewhere in there as i'm listing this all out it sounds like it probably won't fit but we should be able to, we'll make something happen but here lies my dilemma right now is I want the stairs to go in this direction because that's the best use of space. If we were coming this way, we'd have to do a 90-90 and that would eat up wall space for all the fab stuff. Which now that I'm looking at it, may not be as bad as I thought. So I'm shooting for probably a 4x4 CNC plasma. So that would go right here then. If we had the stairs come this way, then 90 up that way, we would just have the stairs next to the plasma. So it's really not obstructing as much as I think it is. And that may alleviate one of my big problems I've been having with the stairs going that way. So say the top landing of the stairs ends up here and our little hallway to get to the office is here. That means we have to waste this space with a walkway to get to that hallway. And when you're talking about 230 square feet, this much of it is something I'd rather not lose if we have stairs that go up here and there. So say we walk, 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 walk. We could have our hallway shoot right down this way, which means we could start our bathroom further over here but I may be incorrect in thinking that because we would have to have headroom for the stairs. So this would have to be open. Oh, right here is exactly why I haven't laid out the masking tape. Unsure what to do. I need to sit down and do a stair calculator to see how far out I have to have an opening in the floor to not hit your head. Because ideally, if you could start the bathroom here instead of here, that means you would have the office start here instead of here. And that would give us about 32 square feet more of office, which I would like. We got another friend. I've had that one solo turkey just roaming around here lately. Kind of odd. Usually see them in groups 
but I'm not not exactly a turkey expert though. All right, I think this may be the solution. So if we wrapped it this way, we obviously have to have two landings. We got one there, one there, but we're gonna have a step up and a step up and a step up and then probably a step up into the hallway. So that would leave us starting right about here. This is our line where the ceiling would have to start opening up for headroom going up the stairs. And this layout could be beneficial in a couple ways. We could put the CNC plasma right there. Depending on what I go with, it should fit. Maybe I downsize to a Langmuir two by three. That would definitely fit there. This is like a four by five foot area. But what we could do then is obviously compressor underneath the stairs, but we could create a full wall to that point. And then that would make dust collection easier on the plasma itself because we could enclose and ventilate from there and have less open space to suck from when we're cutting so that's not a bad idea and that would leave us to where we would just need to span 16 feet to this corner post so we could leave that completely open because 16 feet is doable without anything crazy. So it's an option. The only thing I don't like about it being the stairs would start there. We'd have to leave this part open. So you have room to get to the stairs. This is just tough because no matter what, there's a compromise. It's just picking what compromise I wanna have. There's what I'm thinking for the bathroom. All right, coming up the steps landing this is our main hallway hallway so right here i'm thinking doorway we'll do either a pocket door or a sliding barn door that way we don't have to deal with anything swinging walk through the door here we could build this area into a little mini linen closet so we can keep all our bathroom supplies and whatnot in there vanity i'm thinking toilet and shower We're gonna change this up a little bit. That lasted a long time. Round. I was digging around and looking at some actual shower enclosures, and I think that is the ticket for our small area, our vanity. But what I'd actually do is a pedestal sink. So you wouldn't have anything big and bulky. Since we'll have the closet there, we can store everything in there. Then we got a bucket to poop in, except it'll actually be a toilet. So if we have a pedestal sink, we'll have a lot more area. Let me do something more accurate. It's a good thing I got all these lights around. But there, we could wash our hands. Then we could come over here and go to the bathroom. Because you know if you work for a living, you wash your hands before you go to the bathroom. I mean, it's not the roomiest thing on earth. This could actually probably be yeah. So even more room. Take our shower in here. The shower is kind of completely unnecessary being we're that close to the house, but I do have a plan for that. Eventually I'm gonna have to gut the house. So I figure if I set this up to where I can, hopefully no government agencies are listening, have the ability to live in here, maybe combined with the Range Rubber Camper for a short period while we're in process with that. It'd save a little bit of headache of having to find somewhere else to go. So you guys let me know what you think here, but that leaves us with an actual good office size. Currently in the house, I'm working out of 153 square feet. I just measured it, um, but it is a weird shaped house and it is a weird shaped room. The way it is now would be a little over 120 square feet, but it's way less chopped up. We got one dead dog. Oh, you're still alive? She's a load of help like always. If we could have the desk sitting this way, then I'd be able to roll over, look at what's going on in the shop, roll back and pretend to do some work. And that'd leave quite a bit of room up in front of the desk here. I have a six foot pallet rack type shelf in the office now and maybe have another couple chairs in the center in case i ever have friends and i could put a little cabinet back there the one that matches the desk i wish the shop wouldn't be messy with the fab stuff because it'd be neat to just have an open railing but i assume that's probably a bad idea we need to make sure we have a spot for sasha to nap inside here as well but what do you guys think i think that's a workable thing kind of hard to translate through camera but i'm trying so hallway bathroom 
office. I still need to get rid of all my garbage in here. Why I have a stroller, I'm not sure. I should probably get cracking on this place and get a hoist in that vicinity. The jack stand thing is kind of getting old. But we're doing a little tire rotation and maintenance on the old budget LR4. And by the looks of it here, we're due for some rear brakes. So today we're just gonna evacuate the oil. Instead of draining it out the bottom, underneath the oil cap, Land Rover's got this little tube in. That tube goes down to the bottom of the oil pan and this is exactly what it's designed for. Piece of hose over that. Then we'll take our hose from the little evac. We got the lube tech out helping. So this is the first oil change since doing the new chains. And there's nothing super alarming inside the filter here. Click. That's definitely 25 newton meters. So we are just about done sucking pretty much air right now. So we'll get a little bit more out. We typically use Motul, but being we don't have the shop anymore, I can't get it next day like I could before. So I have to plan ahead better next time. But we just went ahead, did the old castrol that they recommend. I did sin a little bit on this one. Do as I say, not as I do. We just hit 100,000 miles on the LR4 and we did the chains at 94,000 miles. So that means we have 6,000 miles on this oil change. I preach 5,000 miles on these guys. Definitely not the 15 that they recommend. Six won't damage anything. We try and stick to five. I just, it got away from me. Now I sound like all our customers. So we got a little over eight liters out. The one thing that sucks about Land Rovers, that right there. It seems, at least in my neck of the woods, I either get them rotted out on the bottom or the paint baked off on the top. I'd rather have the paint baked off, but it still, it still sucks. So we're gonna have to address the roof on this. So I guess just let me know what you guys think. I'd like some opinions on what to do with the mezzanine. I think the final direction we went in this video is a decent start. I'm gonna begin collecting materials next week so you guys have a little bit of time to bounce some stuff off me. I'd be grateful. With that being said, appreciate you guys watching, appreciate you subscribing, and we will catch you on the next one. Have a good night.